I can walk back and forth across my property because it's my property. I can do anything I want if I own it. So anytime you get into a dispute as to who's got the right to do this, that, or the other thing, the real question that should be asked is who owns the property? If you can identify the owner of the property, the question answers itself. The owner of the property can do whatever they want. Now, we frequently hear the phrase constitutional rights. I hate that phrase. Stop using that phrase. Do not say constitutional rights. The reason that I hate that phrase is because constitutional rights sounds like the Constitution grants us rights. If you are granted something, is it a right or a privilege? It's a privilege. It is impossible to grant someone a right. It's a contradiction in terms. It's like a round square. It, it's, it's the opposite. Like jumbo shrimp, you just cannot have a right which is granted. Now, there is a second concept that... Um, no, let, me, let me continue on this property. You have a right to life. Where does that right to life come from? Well, property. Who owns your body? I hope it's you. What are you if someone else owns your body? You're a slave. So, if, you know, basically, if you are not a slave, then you own your own body. Can you do whatever you want with your body? Yes. Now, is smoking good for you? No, that's pretty much, you know, okay. But if you want to put a cigarette in your mouth and smoke it, it's your body. Do what you want. You know, it's not up to me to tell you what to do with your property. I mean, I don't recommend it. You know, but you're the property owner. Now, John Adams said, the moment the idea is admitted into society that property is not as sacred as the law of God and that there is not a force of law and public justice to protect it, Anarchy and tyranny commence. The law of property is the most important law. Period. Even a two-year-old understands property. Mine. Mine. That's mine. They don't understand it well, but they do understand that owning property is important. And as we get older, somehow we lose sight of that fact. We need to be just a little bit more like a two-year-old to go, that's mine. And we have to be willing to defend that property. Somebody jumps into your car and starts driving away, what do you do? Say, oh, gosh, I better call the insurance company. Or do you chase after them and try to get your car back? It's your property. Now, um, most of you do not own half the things that you think that you own. There is a concept known as a lodial title. A lodial title means that you own it. I mean, the way that we think of when we say that you own something. A lodial title is generally referred to when we talk about land. If you own the land in a lodial title, then you genuinely own the land. How many people went to a real estate agent when they bought their house? Okay, when you go to a real estate agent, are you buying property or real estate? There is a difference. When you buy real estate, you purchase everything from the ground up. You own the house, you own the trees, but you do not own the earth that it sits on. Can you go out in your backyard and drill for oil? No. no. Why? Because there's an ordinance against it? If it's your property, can you do whatever you want with your property? 
And if I can't drill for oil in my backyard, then apparently I don't own the property. Do you pay property taxes? Why? Who are you paying property taxes to? If it's yours, why would you have to give somebody else money? And the truth of the matter is that you do not own the land. You, are, you own the house on top of the land, but you are renting the actual land. And unless you have a lodial title to the land, it is not yours. Now, we will talk about a lodial title when we get to um, uh, the history of the United States. When we broke off with England, people in the uh, American continent here, the people in the United States, were the first people allowed to own land in a lodial title. Prior to that, everything was owned by the king. Now, there are 50 states in the United States. Only one currently still allows you to own land in a lodial title. And you are all very, very lucky because that state is Texas. However, most people in Texas still do not own their land in a lodial title. Learning how to learn how to own your land in a lodial title is another class that I haven't written yet. Now, let's talk about property. I want to really have you understand it. Let us presume that I own my land in a lodial title, the way that we think of when we own something. Now, if it's my land, and I have this stack of lumber on my land. Can I take that stack of lumber and nail it together in the shape of a house? Yes. yes. Why is that? Why can I build that house? Because it's my land. It's my wood. It's all my property. And I can do whatever I want with my property. I don't have to ask anybody for permission. So I now I build this house on my property. And I look at that house two weeks later and I go, well, I've changed my mind. I really don't want that particular house. Can I take all those nails out and disassemble that house and stack the lumber back up? Yes, yes because it is my property. I can, I can rearrange my property and make it, put it in any shape I want. Well, it took me a long time. It was a lot of work to nail all that stuff together. And it's going to be a lot, a lot more work to, you know, pull it apart and stack it up again. And the word's not that important to me. Can I light a match and burn that house down? Some people say yes, some people say no. Is it, is it arson? No, it's not arson. I can burn my own house down if I want. It's my house. If I have a chair in the kitchen, I go, I really don't like this chair. Can I break it up and throw it in the fireplace? Yes. I can burn the chair because it's my property. Why can't I build a house? Burn the house. It's just a bigger chunk of property. So I have a right to burn down my own house, and it's not arson. Unless I have insurance out on it. 